Welcome. Hello, 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 friends. I am John Beckman, Professor John Beckman, Dr. John Beckman, the father of Sid, the transgenic mother of sin, your hostess with the mostest ghetto green screen in the back. T, Earl Grey, make it so. Okay, today I want to talk about um, drawing tablets. So I, I, as I teach the scientific illustration class, uh, every year that I teach it, the first some of the first questions I always get are questions like, what computer should I get? And also, what tablet should I get? And by this, I mean a drawing tablet. These are kind of the two big questions that I always get right away. So let me first discuss this tablets question. Um, there's a couple things that I do think are important. What I tell most people is that the tablet, the tablet that you have, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not gonna make or break you as an illustrator. Like I can work with a super crappy tablet and I've never bought a tablet that was more than like $60. I've never, there are tablets on the market that are like $250, $500, $1,000. Typically those come with like a screen, I think. So you're actually like drawing on an actual screen. I've never bought one of those and it's never hindered my work. I actually prefer, um, this, is, this is the tablet that I'm working on. It's a very, very simple tablet. If you look on at Amazon, so I have a link to it here. The one that I actually use is this XP Pen Deco 1 V2 drawing tablet. Uh, and this is a very simple tablet. It's $60. It's got great reviews, 7,000, over 7,000, 5.5 reviews on Amazon. That's kind of what I usually say is there's many different types of tablets. Just look on Amazon and make sure you check out their reviews and make sure you're only buying one that has good reviews. And if you like, or if, if you feel like at some point you want to get an expensive tablet, you can sort of like upgrade, but I would never start there. I would start with one of these cheap tablets. And the first tablet I actually bought was only $30 and it was perfectly fine. And I, I drew with it for five years. Okay. So I didn't even upgrade to a $60 tablet until after teaching this class for like two years. But there are some things that I do think are important. So the size of the tablet, size of the tablet is important. So I'm drawing on a 10 by 6.5 inch tablet. And this is, this is what it looks like. Okay, if you compare, so here's my hand. Um, here's the pen. I do think that the size of the tablet is important because you can buy on, on Amazon. Sometimes when you buy stuff like the size is not, uh, sometimes you can't tell from the pictures that, that what the size is and you buy something and you, and you get it shipped to your house and you find it's like a, it's like a, tiny like dwarf version of what you actually wanted so you do have to pay attention to these numbers okay because there are there are like six by six tablets i think there are like four by five or something tablets these are pretty tiny and then you end up drawing on kind of like a really really like tiny surface that is that's a problem you don't want to do that so when you're looking at what tablet to buy pay attention to the size of the tablet and all tablets nowadays, or most of them, will come with these like programmable buttons. So on the actual pen, there are two buttons. These are actually really important for the um, ergonomics of, of the pen. When you are drawing in Photoshop, if you have a brush, okay, so I'm drawing with a brush. What I'm finding myself doing all the time is changing the size of the brush. So you really want a button on the pen, on the actual pen that you can click that will allow you to change the size of your brush. Cause I'm, I'm just doing that all the time. And if you have it right there on the pen, it's super easy as opposed to what most people do is, or you will have to, you can right click. If you right click with the mouse, then you can click a spot. 
but then you're always like looking at the screen. How big is this brush? How big is this brush? How big is this brush? Like you're looking at the size of the circle. So it doesn't really work very well. But if you can um, do this, it's just, it's just so much faster to do it on the, on the pen. So that's one thing that you want. All, I think all tablets, all tablets nowadays are going to have that. The other thing is um, one reason why I really like the, the tablet that I have, it does have some software that comes with it, but you don't need it. So one of the things that I found is some of the earlier tablets that I've bought, uh, not this one, but some of the earlier tablets that I've bought, every time you plugged it into a new machine, you'd have to download the driver and install the driver. This one, you just plug it in to any machine and the machine instantly can recognize it and work with it. Like it's got, it's got some kind of a device driver installation thing. So that's one reason why I like this, this cheap tablet that I'm using. This tablet right here. You could just plug it into any machine. I find myself doing this all the time when I'm teaching. I will bring this tablet with me when I go to a classroom, plug it into the, to the computer there, and I can just instantly draw, which is super useful. But I think that nowadays, I think that nowadays, that is something that is probably, um, probably all tablets nowadays have that, that functionality. With that said, there is a downloadable software. So you can download the software. It looks like this. And you can do a couple things. You can change the buttons. And you can change, there's, there's eight shortcuts here. And in Photoshop, some of these shortcuts, there are some zoom outs and some zoom ins. And this can be, this can be really, really useful. And that's typically mostly what I'm using the buttons on the tablet for. If I'm doing like a step forward, step back, I'll typically use the hot, the hot keys on the keyboard. Okay, so, so people kind of always also ask the question, like, do I need, do I need, uh, if I get a tablet, like, do I need a mouse? If I get a tablet, do I need a keyboard? And I think the answer is yes, you need all these things. When, I am, when I'm drawing, I use all three. I will use the mouse all the time because Photoshop, like you can do a little bit and you can click things with, with, the, with the tablet, with the pen. But when I'm selecting tools, I'm always by default going to the mouse or the hotkeys. So I always want for my left hand, on my left hand, I always have my left hand on my comp computer and I'm memorizing hotkeys and pressing hotkeys. Okay, that's like, that's, that's one thing that's gonna allow you to move real quickly in Photoshop is have left hand on the keyboard, right hand with your pen on the drawing tablet. And then I will literally just go, so if, as I'm drawing on the tablet, I will literally just switch and hold the pen like this and grab my mouse. So I can hold my mouse and my pen at the same time. And so on my right hand, I have, I have mouse access and I have pen access and I'm drawing with my right hand. And then on my left hand, I have access to the keyboard. So this might be a little wonky if you are left-handed, but you're gonna have to figure out a system that works best for you. So the answer is, people always ask me like, well, should I bring a mouse? Should I bring a keyboard? Should I bring, what well, if you have a laptop, your keyboard will come with it, but should I bring a mouse? Should I bring a keyboard? Should I bring a tablet? The answer is like, yes, you should be working with all three of those things, the mouse, keyboard, and the tablet. That's gonna make your life a lot easier. I have had students who come into this class and they bring a laptop and they don't bring any extra accessories and they try to do the entire class with their fingers on a trackpad. That is gonna be a nightmare. You will not succeed. And once we start, like after I expect you to kind of like know the, the hotkeys and the techniques at a certain point and the class will start moving much, much faster. So if you are doing trackpad for like the first couple weeks, you're going to fall so far behind when we actually start to like ramp up the amount of assignments we're, we're doing. You need to actually like learn the speed and you can't be fast if you're using a trackpad. So do not use a trackpad. Don't do that. Okay, let's talk about computers. So um, every, every year when I teach this class, I, uh, I always like find myself wanting to upgrade to a new computer or try a new device. So I have in the past been experimenting with different computers and different systems to figure out like really what is the best, what is the best like creativity tools in my opinion. Um, so I have tried, I had tried, originally I started with my gaming computer. Okay, so it's a, it, at the time it was a powerful computer. I think it was eight, 
eight gigabytes of RAM, which now that's not that much now. Um, but, it, and it had a lot of memory by a lot of memory. I mean, like, um, probably something like 500 gigabytes of memory. Okay. And then I, the next year I tried my, I, I bought a surface. So a Microsoft surface, which is, it's a, it's a tablet built in into an actual. So if you haven't seen them, I should get a picture of this. These are the new ones. It looks, it looks like this. This is, this is what it looks like. This is, this is the exact model that I bought. So I tried a, I tried a Microsoft surface, which looks like this. Um, and this was, this was really, I mean, it worked for a little bit, but this was really a mistake for me to buy this. I th I, this was like, it was like $1,500, $1,700, so really expensive. And this was really a mistake. And, and I, I, there ended up to be a couple problems with this. Maybe they fixed them. Maybe, maybe not in the, I, I don't know, but some of the big problems were, um, I would, I, I would frequently switch from like tablet mode to like normal computer mode. And I found that as I was folding this thing in and out and disconnecting the tablet from, um, from the keyboard, there is, there's like a magnetic strip that connects this keyboard to the tablet. And that started like degrading after a while. And so you'd get, there were weird like bugs where I would plug it in and it would not realize that it was connected to the keyboard. That was my, that's one of my biggest complaints with it. The second biggest complaint is when I bought it, I bought it with 128 gigabytes of memory. Okay. And I was thinking at the time, I remember thinking at the time, like 128 gigs, that's not that much, but it'll be fine because like, I'm not planning on storing stuff on this computer. I just want it to be functionally usable. And I found that after I installed like all the Adobe suite, and I was kind of using this for a couple other things, a couple of classes, I was taking some computer science classes and teaching a little bit. Essentially like all that memory filled up in an instant. And for literally the better part of two years, I was constantly always trying to delete stuff so, to make room so that I could run Photoshop. Because if you, if you say, imagine this is your memory and you are running like your computer at like almost like full, full like hard drive space memory, like capacity. If you try to run Photoshop and you don't have like a lot of extra memory available, you'll get this error, which is called, it says scratch disks are full and you cannot run the Photoshop program until you clear up, clear up some space. So I found myself for the better part of two years, always constantly having to delete files that I felt were really important deleting them, trying to get some space on my extra computer just so I could use Photoshop. So like, I would never recommend buying this or any type of laptop that doesn't have um, huge amounts of memory. Nowadays, like I just bought a new laptop for this year and it's, I bought a terabyte of memory. So like, I would not recommend anything anything um, essentially like equal or less than, less than or equal to 128 gigabytes. You want, you need, really need more than that. Um, and, and in terms of like running like Premiere on my Surface, like it, it can't handle my Premiere at all. Like I found myself, I found myself, I bought this new computer and I was like, oh, it's gonna be great. And I found myself going back to my old gaming computer because my gaming computer could at least run like Premiere Pro reasonably. And so like, I would just, I would not go with Microsoft Surface. And if I could if I could redo it, I would definitely take it back. And what I would do is I would buy a, a monster laptop for specially optimized for Photoshop and I would compile it with a tablet. Like I always found, the other thing is, is you're gonna find yourself asking a question when you're thinking about computers, like should I buy an actual tablet? And by this, I mean like a tablet computer. Like the Surface is a tablet computer where you can draw on the screen or like for instance, the iPad Pro. The next year I bought an iPad Pro. So the third thing, the third thing I bought when I, uh, in the second iteration when I taught this class was an iPad Pro with the Apple Pen. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to use this this time when I teach. And I used that for literally about like three days and went back to my gaming computer. So like I've tried, I've tried all kinds of different tablets, the Surface, the iPad Pro. Every single time I find myself going back to essentially just the thing that has the most computing power and plugging in tablet. That's what works best for me. The other thing, I, the other problems I have with the iPad Pro is 
you really need access to a keyboard. So if you're going to try to take the class, um, I have seen students succeed. It's it's all depending dependent upon how much you learn the system. But I just find that trying to interact with just the screen and by pressing buttons on the screen, that interface is far insufficient to keyboard, tablet, mouse. Like it's just so it's so much less uh, efficient. And again, like I have seen fantastic artists that use the iPad Pro. They can get they can get through the class in the iPad Pro. And in, in many cases, they probably like it, but I hate it. I find it completely insufficient. And if you are doing things fast, again, if you are learning the hotkeys, you can just do things so much faster. So I would, in sense of like, should I get a tablet or should I get like a laptop? I would definitely say, do not get a tablet, get a laptop, get a, a functional laptop. Okay, so let's talk about like laptop specs. Like if you're thinking about, okay, I'm going to buy a new laptop, what are kind of specs that are important? Monitors, the monitor that you have on your laptop is super important, or even your desktop or whatever. Anytime you're working with Photoshop, one of the problems that I have personally encountered with the, with the monitors that I'm working with are that some of the monitors, they don't have the full range of colors. And, and you might think, well, I mean, any monitor is going to have sort of like at least a full range of what the human eye can detect. That's not true. Um, monitors are vastly differentiated based on the quality of the color range that they can display. And this is hugely important because I would find myself making, making Photoshop files, making Photoshop artistic files, and then I would open them up on a Mac and Macs have phenomenal monitors. And I would see all kinds of colors added in to my image that I didn't even know were in the file because my monitor was not displaying them properly. So that is extremely important. So if you are going to buy a monitor, or I mean, if you're going to buy a monitor or a laptop or a computer, I would check the specs of the monitor and see if you have RGB, RGB Adobe, so like it's called like Adobe RGB 100%, okay? And I would check that. I would watch all kinds of, before you decide what, what you're gonna buy, I would watch all kinds of YouTube reviews on that specific model. And I would also YouTube, YouTube search things like best computer, best laptop for Photoshop. That, that would be, or like best laptop for Photoshop on a budget, something like that. I would search those and I would watch all those videos. I would see which one everybody is raving about and I would buy that one. Yeah, okay. The other thing that, that I've learned is that Photoshop and Premiere Pro, they're not heavy on the graphics processor. So you might think, well, I'm gonna need like a super powerful graphics card. They're not really running so much on the graphics processor. They're running on the CPU. So you really need a powerful central processing unit, a powerful CPU, if, if, if you want to run these things fast. And especially so with Premiere Pro, when you start, like I started doing um, video edits, doing lots of video edits nowadays. So nowadays when I'm buying a computer, I am, I am specifically optimizing for being able to run Premiere Pro because there's Photoshop, and then there's Premiere Pro. And Premiere Pro is essentially running Photoshop over top, frame by frame by frame by frame. So you can imagine Photoshop itself is a huge computationally intensive because Photoshop is working with individual pixels. And every single time you edit something on the screen, it's got to adapt and modify every single one of your pixels, okay, with that particular effect or whatever. And if you're running Premiere Pro, it's that like to the power, to like a next power N, because you're doing that not only on the image that you're looking at, but on every frame down the line in the timeline of the movie. So these are, these are things to know you really want. If you're, if you're going to get a computer that's specialized for Adobe products, you want high CPU power. And one of the things I learned as I was watching the, um, the reviews of these on YouTube, the reviews of these laptops, these desktop computers is there are some laptops that are specifically optimized for quote unquote creators. So you can buy specific laptops that are specifically optimized for the particular software that you're gonna be running them on. So nowadays when I'm looking for what I should buy, I'm looking for specifically laptops that are built to run Photoshop and Premiere Pro, okay? 
So that's what I'm doing nowadays. Okay, so let's talk about RAM. Um, my gaming computer, which ran Photoshop well, is eight gigabytes of RAM. So you can get by on Photoshop with eight gigabytes of RAM, but if you have a lot of other stuff that's running, like it will become insufficient. So the problem that I encountered was I had to start running Photoshop and Zoom at the same time because I wanted to record my classes. I needed to interact with my students online. And I also needed to demonstrate demo Zoom or demo Photoshop at the same time. So I was running Photoshop and Zoom at the same time. And my eight gigabyte computer, eight gigabytes of RAM, that, that was starting to crash periodically. Okay. So I would say nowadays, eight gigabytes of RAM is kind of like the bare minimum. Um, especially if you're going to have to be zooming into a class and doing Photoshop at the same time, it's not going to work well. One thing you can do that students have done in is they would zoom in with their phone and then they would work on their computer separately, which can sort of like save your computer that processing power. If you're zooming in on like your iPad or your phone, and then you're just interact, you're doing your work on your computer that can work. You can get by with that on eight gigabytes of RAM. But for instance, I bought um, a new desktop for Premiere Pro um for premiere pro and i'm running 64 gigabytes of ram and that's now what i'm making most of my movies on my teaching videos so and that's that more well, that's not going to be in the price range of most people but that's that's kind of like a dominant setup and the laptop that i just bought is 32 gigabytes of ram so that's that seems like good and i felt like that laptop was reasonably priced it was like 1800 dollars. it's like kind of like a reasonable high-end laptop within kind of like the mid mid-range budget Okay, so these are all the things you want to think about as you're thinking about starting the class. Um, these are the specs that you're going to be thinking about. The most important thing is have a functioning computer that can handle the Photoshop program and get yourself a drawing tablet, plug it into your computer and start getting familiar with the programs. Once you have that, you're going to be okay. I'll post a link to this Amazon tablet down below. It'll be in there. This is the one that I like. It's less than the cost of a textbook, so I would really recommend buying it. Or if you want something cheaper, you can look at it, but keep in mind the things that I was discussing. All right, see ya.